Hello everyone, Mike with Spray Jones. And you might hear the twinge of annoyance in my voice today as we do this video because nothing gets me more upset quickly than having to deal with people, well, systems that are set up to fail. Nothing is more of a failure in Canada in residential construction than quite simply the fiberglass batted basement system where the weather gets really really cold so you can deal with high water tables and and uh, medium temperatures that don't sw swing in very very much but it, when, when you are dealing with cold weather climate and you're dealing with a lot of temperature fluctuations where it can be extremely cold one day and then warm the next fiberglass batting in a concrete foundation should not be code allowed so what you are looking at here is a composite diagram of how the national building code of canada recommends that a basement be insulated with fiberglass or mineral fiber batting they are calling for something called an internal here internal damp proofing so for people that don't really understand what's going on here i'll give you a quick overview spread footing usually eight feet to nine feet down in the ground an eight foot or seven foot poured concrete slip form design then the floor trusses will be set on top and the house built on top of that the foundation is going to be a full usually eight feet down in the ground and that frost level isn't going to go any deeper than five or six feet therefore the footing is stabilized into non-freezing ground and therefore won't heave we have had frost go deeper than that but that's a rare instance so this is determined to be usually a fairly typical standard detail that we would see in maybe 90 percent of the houses grade level will vary from anywhere from three feet down from the concrete to two feet down to all the way up towards the concrete it can vary wherever grade level is going to be and that's what this dotted line is showing here grade level that is where the code is telling you to put a piece of polyethylene the poly comes down the wall it comes underneath the plate and then it's going to be tied in and sealed with the facing vapor barrier that's going to go up the front of the batted insulation the entire purpose of this internal damp proofing is to take care of a theoretical problem that moisture movement, even though you have exterior damp proofing and waterproofing on the outside of the foundation, that moisture movement is going to mitigate from uh, subgrade into the interior space and get the batting wet. So they want there to be no chance for the batting to come in contact with water that's working its way through the walls that's the theory this whole entire system is utter rubbish and is an utter failure for a couple of very simple facts if the water is coming through the wall the vapor barrier up against it doesn't stop a thing all it's going to do is change the collection point if anything you should be putting something internally that's going to stop the water from coming through the wall not change its collection so water comes through the wall what does it do it hits the plastic the plastic isn't bonded it's not adhered so the where's the water going to go it's going to be fill up the loose space between the uh, six mil polyethylene and it's going to come out at the at the plate so it hasn't it hasn't removed anything from getting wet it's just changed where the water is going to go i have been hammering home for quite some time air leakage air leakage is your number one source of water because when you have relative humidity in the basement you have limitless water flowing through the holes and the gaps that you have in the wall so what you're normally going to do is you're going to put up a six mil piece of polyethylene and then you're going to put the sheetrock up and the sheetrock is going to litter uh, riddle the polyethylene full of holes right a two centimeter by two centimeter hole that's basically one quarter inch by one quarter inch that size of a hole can throw, uh, flow 30 liters of water from April to October uh, in Saskatchewan, Alberta, Ontario, you name it, Canada, even in the northern United States. The physics are the same for Minnesota, North Dakota, Wyoming, right? The physics are the same. The issue is the amount of 
heating days and the relative humidity so you have this vapor drive and air drive from the inside to outside and how much water pressure and air pressure is going to be going through uh, that little gap so you have the ability in a situation like this to have limitless water flowing through the hole via the air coming in contact with a freezing cold foundation anywhere from at frost level all the way up so think maybe two feet off the ground right because the, the the footing is isolated and is at non uh, frozen temperature so maybe two feet up it's actually starting to freeze so from two feet up the wall you've got six feet of wall that can get sub-zero sub freezing and at that point you've got not just the ability to form condensation but to form ice ice in the walls and frost and that's the exact community post that I did that you know only a few of you saw we I posted frozen bats to a wall last week and showed you this where the fiberglass that was from let's just say the midpoint on the wall upward the back of that wall had gotten so cold that the condensation had actually frozen formed ice and then when the temperature outside of the house warmed up the wall warmed up with it and as a result the ice uh, melted and then the water flows down the wall. You cannot fix this problem, folks. You cannot fix this problem with a better vapor barrier. You cannot fix it from switching to fiber, from fiberglass to mineral fiber. You can't do it, right? It's an air leakage issue, and it is a flawed system based on how it is physically set up, what is it, what is, everything is in contact with, and how the heat flow equation is going to work for rapid cooling to rapid uh, temperature increase now you might say well Mike if you know if it hadn't gone really really warm really really quick outside he wouldn't have had a problem if it had warmed up gradually it would have dried out no it would not no it would not if you have ice on the back of this wall if this wall is riddled with condensation wet to the hand wet to the touch where's the water gonna go is the water gonna wick into the concrete and back out maybe very very slowly very slowly it would have to wick back out but generally speaking water is heavy right water is going to want to run down the wall as soon as it runs down the wall it's going to get everything wet and this problem is going to accelerate so this may be a so-called code compliant wall but as far as i'm concerned somebody should go to jail for having drawn this and making this a compliant system so here's just a side detail uh, view of what we've been talking about in the 3D. Here's your foundation, here's your floor joist, whether it's open web or solid. This shows grade uh, level being a lot taller than in the other picture, but the internal vapor barrier damp proofing is right here, and then it's going to come down. It's going to loop up, and then you'd fold the flap into the vapor barrier that you would uh, be sealing well, sealing trying to provide an air barrier system for for your fibrous material so and you would tuck that in and tie that into everything that you're doing up at the top this system will not work okay if you are getting a new house built and your builder wants to do this I'm guaranteeing that you are going to have moisture problems inside the wall assembly somewhere whether or not you know about it is going to be dependent on uh, how far in the ground you are, the fluctuations that you're getting, the humidity level that you keep the basement at and the rest of the house at, and then the wild swings of temperature that we get up and down. But you are going to have moisture coming out at the baseboard level. And usually the people only see it after they've started living in the basement a lot more. They, uh, they don't have, well, if they don't have board, they just have bat and they have poly and that's it. A lot of times the poly is going to start to let go, the tape is going to start to let go, uh, the caulking is going to let go, and things are going to get worse and they'll see the water coming out. But the accelerated problems usually happen when this is developed. You're putting sheetrock up, you're now living down there, the kids' bedrooms are down there, the family the room's way, down there. The only way to seal it was just like a little caulking. Or like a little of a... Black jack or whatever. So moisture is getting in frosting up and then when it warms up it melts.
and you're using the space a lot more and all of a sudden hey we didn't notice it before but the carpet's wet at the edge the baseboard's wet the paint's starting to the buckle at the bottom of the drywall what's going on and then you start pulling these apart i actually had a builder start to remove this system from their spec book they wouldn't they wouldn't do it but you know what they ended up sliding back into it again because of cost you know it's just it's harder to explain to the homeowners when you're up against uh, a fiber system most people have no idea the, the suicide that this is going to commit on its own it's such a rudimentary flawed system and the water problems that it's going to bring into the basement not to mention the, the heat loss and the energy use and the higher utility cost so how do you go about fixing something like this well you don't fight you make a right you cannot fix this with doing better caulking, better vapor barrier, better tape, better poly, none of it. You can't. The system cannot, it's running at the absolute maximum design. So what you have to do, you have to switch to uh, rigid insulation. Now let's take a look at board stock for a second. Here would be the same detail, only now you're going to be using extruded polystyrene and, and framing. The issue is all the joints adhering the board stock to the concrete and then a three percent gap behind the board and the concrete will account for a 15 percent reduction in the overall efficiency of the board being able to do its job so although the board is impervious to water you're still dealing with an air leakage issue so you want the board to fit tight and uh, in intimate contact you want to get rid of that three percent void or ten percent void so that means over all of the seams in the concrete and the snap ties and all the protrusions that are sticking through so you have to get it uh, fitting in intimate contact then you need to tape all of the seams and and can foam all the irregularities and then you put your framing up if you are thinking that you want to do that then the spray polyurethane foam system is an absolute no-brainer because now we're we're bringing in spray applied rigid foam insulation we're adhered to the concrete you can't get any air to go through it, you can't get any water to go through it, and it's bonded to the concrete. So when things get cold, when the concrete gets extremely cold, you cannot get warm, moisture-laden air from the interior space to go through the insulation or through a seam and touch that cold substrate to condense uh, or to form frost. So it's just simple physics, folks. The concrete can get cold and stay cold, and it's supposed to. That's what it's going to do unless you put insulation to the outside, right? And then from the interior side, you're putting your bonded urethane uh, insulation and air seal all the way to the inside. The framing can be integrated. You can do the framing before or after. doesn't matter. I've got a whole entire video on that, on do's and don'ts with basements. But this problem is solved by getting rid of the water, drying the basement out, right, and then not putting bad insulation back in and poly. Once the basement's dry, getting the spray foam guys in, getting us in doing a couple of inches of closed cell foam on the inside and then the problem is absolutely gone. Payback on something like this is just a couple of years. But I really don't even care on the ROI because what was the basement being functionally before? When it's wet, when it's damp, when it's frosty, when the bats are frozen to the outside of the wall, what are you going to do? How are you going to use the space? You can't. It's totally ruined. So it, it it doesn't make any difference whether the bats are 1500 bucks, $2,000 to put in. I don't care. It's irrelevant, right? It's like going down and buying a typewriter and sending your kids off to college with a typewriter. It's useless or very limited use. They're not going to be able to get into what they need to do with it. So closed cell foam is the exclusive proper uh, building dominant choice for concrete, anything concrete, crawl space, grade beam, foundation, cinder block, old brick, doesn't matter. If it's in the ground or at grade level or close to grade level, if it's concrete, it should be in rigid insulation and it should be self-adhered rigid, which is going to be spray urethane foam. So this is really a no-brainer to me. We come in, we spray two inches of closed cell foam, we drop the utility consumption instantly. The basement usually picks up two to three degrees Celsius of interior temperature. Uh, for those of you that speak Fahrenheit, we're talking like 8 degrees Fahrenheit, 9 degrees Fahrenheit of, of temperature change, positive temperature change. 
The basement's warm, the basement's dry, the condensation problem is gone. The only way for us to have a condensation issue is to actually physically miss a spot. Other than that, if we get the right amount of thickness of foam, it's done, it's cured. Put the basement up, put the drywall up, uh, finish the interior space, and kiss your problems goodbye. So I, I, don't, I don't see how this is a tough sell. This isn't a tough sell. This is get closed cell foam, have a warm, dry basement, kiss your problems goodbye, and have the life of the use of the house forever and multi-generations. To go with the other system means you're incorporating a whole bunch of what-if scenarios and it's going to have nothing but problems. In in the area where we live and work, uh, closed cell foam to the inside of basements is becoming very, very the norm. Um, we're still having to fight it on new construction because the actual builder is the problem there. They just do not want to try and explain to the homeowner why uh, they're spending many thousands of dollars more over a fiberglass system. And they're just lazy. So the builders are lazy, straight up. They just, they don't want to explain it, even though it's better, even though it's going to not cause problems. They do not want to go out and vouch for a truly better product when it comes to the basements. Maybe the time is coming that if they start to have more and more problems with new home warranty where they're on the hook, but if it's not their money involved, they're not wanting to explain anything unless you come to them and tell them that's what you want. So if you're getting a new home built, doing a renovation, tell your builder you want closed cell spray foam, get you a price, get a level tier two or tier one installer to get it in, uh, placed in and you won't have any problems and you'll be happy with your purchase. So this video, we're gonna cut it off here. Solve the problem with closed cell foam. Gone are the water problems once you know why it's happening and it's so, so easy take care of this with just switching to closed cell polyurethane spray foam right comment like subscribe i want to hear what you have to say talk to you soon